Hey Bitcoiners, today we'll talk about how much a Bitcoin is really worth. And the number will surprise you. Pro probably. My name is Luca Nicora, your host. Welcome to... And now what? In an article published last year, JP Morgan analysts have said Bitcoin's value could rise to almost $150,000 over the next decade. While Mike Novogratz at Galaxy Digital has forecast a valuation of $500,000 by 2024. Now, I'm not sure exactly how they came up with these numbers. And before I give you an answer to that question that satisfies my understanding of the world, I wanted to look at how we value things in general. For this episode, I also use a lot of material found on the What Is Money Show by Robert Breedlove. His podcast is all about Bitcoin. I don't necessarily agree with everything on it, but it's a very interesting listen. How do we value things in this world? We value goods and services based on how rare they are, how they can solve a problem, or how much value they add to our lives. We value cars because they can drive us easily from one spot to the other without having to run or buy a horse. Yeehaw! We value loved ones because they give us a sense of validation, love, and support. I'm so proud of you, Jeremy. My, my name is Luca. Whether it's an object, an app, or even a person, there's always an exchange of time or energy. I give you my time, you give me fill in the blank. And what is that energy we use to value things? A money baby. As I said in the previous video I made about money and Bitcoin and how Bitcoin may be the thing that will save our civilization. If you haven't watched it yet, it's right there. Check it out, press on that link. Money is the energy of the economy. It's the fuel that makes the whole thing work. Monetary energy is the yardstick we use to measure how much much anything is worth. Hey, I don't judge my friends based on money. Well, think again. Whenever you make plans to see friends, do you ever ask yourself, is it worth spending the gas money? Or how much should I spend for their Christmas present? Right? Money is part of how we measure everything. Now, what if I told you the way you see the world is completely wrong? What? To measure anything, you need a standard that does not change over time. Like one kilo is equal to 100 grams. That has always been the case and always will be, unless there is a change in gravity, in which case everything we ever built would crumble. Kind of like your little sister destroying your whole Lego city you built. The problem with money, or the thing we use to measure everything, is that it changes all the time. Why? Because what they call quantitative easing. It almost sounds like some kind of mantra. Now ease into the quantitative state. If you're looking for some meditation, check out my channel. Every other week I post one. Quantitative easing is just a smart way to say that a country has the ability to print as much money as they want and just distribute as they see fit. Who's a good bank? Who's a good bank? Oh, here's a treat. Who's the good bank? You're a good bank. Which leads our money to lose its value at about a 2% rate per year. It does not mean that things become more expensive, it means that you need more money to pay for things that have the same worth. Okay, that's a weird concept. For instance, if I bought a $100,000 house 20 years ago, by the end of 2021, it would be worth 117% more, which is about $217,301. Because there's less properties available, so it's more rare, right? Sure, but mostly because your money can't buy as much house. With inflation at about 2% per year over 20 years, that's 40%. 117% minus 40%, that's 70 7%. So your house should really be worth $177,000. That's a lot of money, sure, but that's almost half of the $217,301. See the difference? The value of things isn't really what it is because money loses its value consistently over time. Another way to look at it is if you check the S&P 500 or the index of the best 500 performing companies in the US. If you bought stocks in 81, you would now have an increase of value by 3,000%. Wow! But if you value the S&P 500 in gold or something else that doesn't lose too much of its value, you would see a very different graph. Or even better, if you measure in Bitcoin, you would see the opposite. What? Another problem with an inflationary money is that our salaries usually don't grow as inflation does. So if you didn't get a 7% pay raise in 2022, you got a pay cut. What? What? Once you see the problem with inflation, you understand that you need to put your money somewhere to beat that 2 to 7% inflation rate per year, so you buy stocks. But stocks are valued based on money. So a share of Tesla is not really worth a million dollars? Exactly. And how do we know if a company is not gonna go bankrupt? Because apparently we are in a everything bubble. 
So most people end up buying properties, houses, art, or collectibles, or wines, which, you know, in the hope that things will grow in value, which they most likely will, unless earthquakes, tornadoes, floods, fires, termites, or all of the above if you live in Japan, plus the fact that in Japan property does not grow in value, so you're basically fudged. Nandane! And the problem with property is that it's never really yours. What do you mean? My house is my house, bro! Well, if you don't pay your taxes with the medium of exchange that the authorities of your country has deemed acceptable, they can take it away. And if you live in a totalitarian country, they can take anything from you. Sorry, I'll, I'll take your keys now. Sorry. So besides the fact that Bitcoin is uh, technologically more advanced than our current monetary system, why is it worth so much? Bitcoin is a piece of property that cannot be taken away from you. A country can be bombed and the gold will survive for their invaders to collect. You can't do that with Bitcoin. As I said in the previous video, it does not lose value over time because it has a set supply. It won't risk to go bankrupt like a stock. It won't risk earthquakes like a property. It's basically imperishable. And it cannot become quantitative eased into becoming worthless. It's immortal. But its value changes all the time. It's too volatile. Yes, because it is a new technology and people don't really understand its true value and people buy low and sell when it peaks to cash in their gains. But eventually when corporations, companies and hedge funds are all invested in Bitcoin related companies like PayPal or mining companies, it will eventually plateau to its true value. Okay, so how much a Bitcoin is really worth? Just tell us the answer, please. Before I give you the answer, if you got any value from this video, make sure that you like the video and subscribe to the channel to give me some validation. Thanks. According to author and entrepreneur Jeff Booth, he divides the total global stock market, which is $400 trillion, by the supply of Bitcoin that will ever be mined, which is 21 million. So if you divide $400 trillion by 21 million Bitcoin, you get $19,047,619.04. Actually, the markets are currently overflown with cash, so everything is overvalued, so we would probably be a little bit less than $400 trillion, but you get the idea. The truth is money is losing its value at a scary speed and it affects everything from how much you get paid to how much you spend. So as long as money is losing its value, most likely Bitcoin will grow in value as well. Unless we change how we value things, it is impossible to truly know the value of a Bitcoin. Even those $19 million, it's based off of money. But for the past 10 years, the trend has been upward. So most likely Bitcoins will keep on increasing in value in the next decade. So Bitcoin may be the most promising and stable placement. So where can you buy Bitcoin? You can get up to $250 or free Bitcoin on BlockFi and other free cryptos with my links below. So if you want to know more about how to place your money safely in the stock market, check out this video. And if you want to know more about alternative placements to not rely too much on the stock market, check out this video. Thanks for tuning in. See you guys in the next episode. Invest in your wallet, invest in yourself and invest in your future. Love you guys. Peace.